sitting on top of the world. Ashes to ashes and dust to dust Is there nobody in the world to trust? Oh, now she's gone, gone, and I don't worry Lord, I'm sitting on the top of the world Mississippi River is deep and wide Woman I love, Lord, stand on the other side out some songs. Some of you folks who have come, have kindly come to almost all these concerts. I'm really grateful. But I need to play some new stuff. Oh, the mom will do it sometime. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. I gotta do more. Mama will do Okay. <laughs> this is one that, um, this is a, a song that was on an album that's been out of print and it was going to be on my newest CD. Uh, I have a, a slight delay in this new CD because of an ill health working with me on it, but um, this is the title song of the CD, has been long gone, so this is not a new song, that will be new to you. I'd rather play it too. I know it may sound crazy, like one of those childhood things. But long before my wandering days, I heard the highway sing. In a South Carolina country town, in a house right beside the road, I often dreamed of future times and the towns I'd come to know. Stillness was profound. There was no air conditioner noise. And the icebox made no sound. But somewhere in the summer night, I could hear a far off whine. A truck down U.S. Highway 1 was making up some time. Pretty soon he'd rumble past and rattle the walls and beam. And then he'd fade away to nothing. But the night birds and my dreams take me down the road as far as I can go. Take me places I've never known. And every now and then, just like a long lost friend, I come across a highway from back home. I love to cross the highway from back home. But I do question my calling when missing her gets me down. A thousand miles of kindly strangers vanish in the wind. But cross a well known highway, I've come across a friend.
I was playing in Massachusetts when I wandered north one day. You see, Maine's a state I'd never seen. So I turned my wheel that way. And I found myself on US 1, and this feeling came around. That road a thousand miles away. <laughs> I think I'm dying. I hear the angels. I hear the angels. It's a dying intervention. Oh, oh hell, I'm still here. <laughs> that road a thousand miles away ran right through my hometown. Take me places I have never known Every now and then Just like a long lost friend I come across a highway from back home I love to cross a highway from back home Stepped out of my van Cause I knelt beside the highway And I felt it with my hand I closed my eyes and made believe I could steal her walking around On US 1 A thousand miles away From my hometown Take me down the road As far as I Take me places I have never known Every now and then, just like a long lost friend I come across a highway from back home My love to cross a highway from back home My love to cross a highway from back home So I wrote this song inspired by the way Tom writes songs, which is not like the way I write them at all. Tom, Tom's songs are always understandable. They're always right down the middle of the road. You know exactly what he's singing about. He writes so beautifully. And uh, my songs are more uh, uh, come off the right side of the brain. <laughs> I have songs where people will say, you know, Jack, I just love that little song of yours, but what does it mean? <laughs> And I don't mind this at all. I don't mind. They get, they seem to get something from the song, and it seems to work out fine. So I, I took my cue from Tom, and I thought I, I was inspired to try to write something, try to hold it in the road a little bit. Now, I failed completely. <laughs> but but the exercise took me to a different place in the song. Right? And I ended up writing a song that I really liked, and ended up being the title song for my last CD. Time, speak it softly, make it rhyme, take the high road, the high road. Lies and secrets fly by night, let's walk together in the light, take the high road, the high road. Who 
Who's to say what's right or wrong? It all depends who wrote the song. I wrote, I wrote home. Say today or say manana. Play with money or play piano. Take the high road. I wrote home. It's a long way from here to there. Spill your wine or fill your cup. Thank your stars or count your bucks. You can take your time or use it up. It's a long way. Who's to say what's right or wrong? It all depends who wrote the song. Take the high road, high road home. Light a fire, let it burn. That's the way. Children learn to the high road, the high road home. Your mother smiles and your sister frowns, so you send your love from distant towns. Take the high road, the high road. Now, if your preacher tells a lie, keep your faith and say goodbye. The high road, the high road home. And it's your flag, right or wrong, keep it upright and sing your song. Take the high road, the high road home. It's a long way from here to there. Spill your wine, fill your cup, thank your stars or count your bucks. You can take your time or use it up, it's a long way. Hey, pick your friends, pick your clothes, pick your demons, heaven knows, take the high road. Sorry about that one, Tom. That was really close. When the reaper comes to call, think I'll shed no tears at all. To the high road, the high road home. He'll say howdy and I'll say hey. I'll take his hand and call it a day. Take the high road, the high road home. It's a long way from here to there. Spill your wine, fill your cup. Thank your stars, I count your bucks. You can take your time or burn it up. It's a long way. Tell the truth every time. Speak it softly, make it rhyme. The high road, the high road home. Take the high road, the high road. West for the first time with my daddy, Lieutenant Captain Major Colonel Williams. <laughs> I was an army brat. Nothing I could do about that. But I got to go some interesting places. Um, I didn't realize how moving to 17 schools in 12 school years, having to change friends every few months, every few years, was going to complicate my later life. I had no idea. But you know, people are always saying, "Well, Jack, you know, you get all this." You go great places, you know, you should be thankful. Well, I guess I should be. There's nothing I can do about it now. But, but one of the places he, he moved was, the first time was to Fort Sill, Oklahoma. I was too young to remember that. But then after that, since he was, a, he was in the military, and he shot the big guns. And big guns became obsolete. And he had to go to El Paso, Texas, to learn how to shoot guided missiles. You know, it's a more efficient way to kill people, I guess. You know? <laughs> he just needed to learn how to do that, being in that business. Um, I guess it's a business, and uh, it seems to relate to business somehow. I won't go there. <laughs> but I got, got to live in El Paso in 1953, 1954, and then back in 1960. And uh, then I ended up living in Southern California and uh, the Rockies of Colorado, not Washington State. So my connection with the West was firmly established over a couple of decades there. I found that what I'd been taught by my grandmother was BS. <laughs> she was trying to make a good Baptist of me. Not a good person, not a good Christian even, but a good Baptist. 
And not even a good Southern Baptist, American Baptist, or even a South Carolina Baptist, but and not even a Pleasant Hill, South Carolina Baptist. She wanted, she wanted to make me in her own image. I didn't go for it. Fortunately, that's one reason why I'm glad I traveled around a lot. Because I, got to, I got to go to Japan and I saw Buddhists and Shinto, who people who were getting along really well with each other. Duh. But my grandmother <laughs> said they were heathens. I mean, you know. And I thought, well, but they're treating each other well. And they treat us really well, even though we just dropped the bomb on them ten years before I landed on those shores. And uh, so I had to go back and rethink what my grandmother taught me about being a Baptist. And I realized that by the time I was nine years old, I'm not here. <laughs> Don't you love technology? <laughs> About the time I get halfway through the story of Horn, out there's going to go, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> Right. <laughs> See, I was doing a song. Where were you? Japan. 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 She's so easy to not think about. <laughs> Japan, 1955. That's exactly right. Well, but. But what happened was that I found out that, that even when I was nine years old, I came to realize that fear, guilt, and shame weren't going to bring me to a good spiritual place. <laughs> it just was, it was just something weird about this. And, um, so, so I was, my grandmother was really, she just, by the time noon rolled around, whenever I was visiting her, which was always for a month or two or two weeks, you know, she would consign me to the flames about five times before <laughs> noon every day. I was, I was going to burn. That was the way it was, you know. Uh, I mean, for crying out loud, I, I, maybe in my, I was 10, 11 years old, and she really hit me hard one time, consigned me to the flames for some really, really bad thing that I'd done. And I went running to her next door neighbor, her best pal. Same church, same congregation. <laughs> Miss Evil Mary, I'm going to hell. And she said, Jackie, whatever did you do? <laughs> and I told her. And I'll never forget this moment. She said, Jackie, that's not a sin. You're not going to hell for that. And I remember standing there thinking, oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I had discovered interpretation. <laughs> My grandmother didn't like that concept. But anyway, I moved on in the Southwest. I came in contact with a couple of Native American ideas of spirituality. Something that everybody in Santa Fe takes as a matter of course. Even though they're not Native American. But they learn. They decorate their homes with all of these, these deities. Santa Fe is. I think they really think they're really cool. Out there. <laughs> but I thought about this, and I thought, you know, what? It is so cool to have a deity who does not operate on fear, guilt, and shame. <laughs> you got a deity that takes you out where you need to be to learn how to get along in life and learn about yourself. And it's a dark, strange place. You're not at ease in this place. And so you reach back for the hand of this deity, and he's gone. Play the trick on you. I just thought the coyote needed a song. The desert turns cold in the midnight. The air is quicksilver dry. The stars shine like souls in flight over the snow in the black mountain sky. Coyote measures the distance between him and the fear in my heart. He leads me down to a canyon and then he disappears in the dark. And then he disappears in the dark. Your children are calling, I tell him. Calling for you to come home. You can't be a cold, heartless father who would leave his babies alone. But maybe those aren't your children, just phantoms that you want me to hear. Oh, and maybe that's only a shadow. It's 
instead of the love I fear. Instead of the love I fear. And I said, oh, Coyote, you tricked me again. Who do you think you are? Enemy, lover, devil, or friend? I can see you behind yonder star. The cities of gold have all vanished. Conquistadors lost in the ground. The coyote stands undiminished. He is watching, not making a sound. Why is the canyon wind laughing? Why does a sidewinder cry? Oh, the song dog is up to his old tricks tonight. Now who in the devil am I? The devil am I? And I said, oh, coyote, you tricked me again. Who do you think you are? me, lover, devil, or friend? I can see you behind yonder star. I see you behind yonder star. I don't have all this stuff completely worked out. Sometimes I have new things that come to mind. One night it occurred to me, isn't she going to be surprised when I show up at the same place where she is? <laughs> <laughs> Jackie, what are you doing here? These are the good people. <laughs> I'll play another song from, from my... Uh, Sojourn in the West. This is a song that I don't play often in concert. I have not been playing, but I really missed it because I like the song and I like the story. And I have to tell you that it's another one of my heroes. This is a black man born a state of slave in Midway, Texas. By the time he was 17 years old, the Yankee soldiers came around and freed all the slaves. But by that time, he decided, I'm not going to stay here and become blacksmith like my daddy. His daddy's name was Shoe Boy. Because this young man, who every, every young person in the world, black or white, should know about, and they're learning in school, taught himself to read as a slave against all the rules and regulations of slavery. Certainly don't want our slaves being able to read and figure out what a mess they're in and come back after us. We just don't get have that. It's kind of the way they're treating us nowadays in the corporate world. And I said, Never mind, I'll go. <laughs> I think I understand slavery now more than I ever did before. Mr. Monsanto. <laughs> well, George McJunkin was his name. He took the name of the people who he was a slave to. But he ran away that night and he took off. He became the best cowboy anybody had ever seen worked on the Chisholm Trail. He taught himself to read, not just to read, but he taught himself, according with books that some very helpful white folks gave to him, mostly women that he met, ranchers' wives, really liked his attitude and his approach. He learned biology, he learned botany, he learned astronomy, he learned archaeology, he learned everything you can imagine. He learned to play a guitar, he learned to play the fiddle. This man could do anything. But there were not many places for a black man in the West. So he felt around Trinidad, Colorado. Oh, no, that's a dangerous place. So he went on down and found Folsom, New Mexico. People were rather open to the idea of a black person. Then he became 
the first and only ever black foreman of a white ranch. And he had gotten his telescope, and he used it as, in his capacity as a foreman. And one day there was a terrible flash flood in Folsom, and it killed 17 people in that little town, or barely that many in the town. And it went out to the Crowfoot Ranch where he worked and went over a draw, left the barbed wire suspended high above, so the cattle all went down underneath. So he had to go with his telescope to go find the cattle. And as he went down into that gully that was dug by the water, he looked up in the side, and he found bones sticking out. And he went up with his little brush. George McJunkin was prepared. He cleaned it off, and he didn't disturb the bones at all, but he found a spear point embedded in what he determined were ancient bison bones. So he wrote down the spot, and he was able to tell exactly where that spot was because he was also a surveyor. He was also been the guy that all the white ranchers chose to survey and settle border boundary disputes. He was so trusted in the town, even this black ex-slave, that the ranchers, when they played poker, had him hold the stakes, you know. I mean, George Junkin was a well-loved character. So he wrote down where these bones were, and he wrote to who he knew was a Austrian scientist 30 miles away and said, I found something I think that will be of interest to you. Well, 30 years later, the scientist came and realized that this set Native American habitation back in our understanding of 5,000 years. George McJunkin had discovered the Folsom Man. But Mr. Schwachheim took the credit. Of course, we can't have this old black guy over here, the old slave, what does he know? Well, I tell you what, not only did he find it, but he told him exactly where to find it in the middle of the desert. So I read about this in Natural History Magazine, and I thought, you know, I, there's a song here. <laughs> Too much information for one song, so that's why I tell you the long story, and the rest of it's to come up. <laughs> Junkin was your boy's son, born to slavery in '51. Down the arroyo where the flash flood ran, he found some bones and the full sun. to his blacksmith daddy saddled with a chocolate hide George McJunkin was a rebel who taught himself to read and to ride when the Yankee soldiers freed him he left and never said a goodbye working as a white man's for it's the wrong verse oh yeah. I can't believe I've forgotten this song. <laughs> That's what happens when you live this long. <laughs> George McJunkin was a rebel who taught himself to read and to write. When the Yankee soldiers freed him, he left and never said a goodbye Hoofing it hard across Texas He found a stray mule to ride As a cowboy, George knew no equal Riding up the long cattle drive Roping his way into legend And reading at night beneath the sky He settled down in a valley when the echoes of slavery had gone, working as a white man's foreman on the high desert, dry Cimarron. George McJunkin was your boy's son, born to slavery in '51.
saved the life of a soldier who granted a gift in return. The brass telescope hung proudly with his ropes and his books and his gun. He studied the stars and the heavens. He wondered where had the dinosaurs gone. He learned about the flowers and fossils and the light in the mockingbird's song. And George made a gift of his learning and passed every bit of it down. He played the guitar and the fiddle and was loved as a friend in the town. He never knew what he found there on the Crowfoot Arroyo that day. In the sands, the point of a hunter whom time had long hidden away. Telescope books and gun. George McJunkin was shoe boy son. Here is a song worth singing. Here is a tale to be told about a true American cowboy. A hero of pure black and gold. In 1922, he lay dying among friends in the Folsom Hotel. They read from his books till their parting. He took to his freedom so well. George McJunkin was shoe boy son. Born to slavery in 51 Down the arroyo where the flash flood rain He found some bones in the full sun George McJunkin was shoe boy's son South Carolina. It was her mother that perpetrated <laughs> religiosity on me. She didn't succumb either. My mother was uh, my big supporter. She was my supporter and my buffer. I had to have a buffer. When you're the, you're the musician in the family with Lieutenant Captain Major Colonel Williams, you need a buffer. <laughs> And one thing that made it work really well was that my dad liked to play golf, but my mother could kick his ass on the golf course. Right? Let's just put it in plain terms here. My mother had seven holes in one at tournament golf, and you did not want to play golf with her if your ego was intact or you were married to a general. <laughs> my mother paid absolutely no attention at all to the protocol of rank. Her reply was, I'm not in the army, he is. <laughs> Well, and this song doesn't have it in there that she met a mute ear heart when she was a young teen. As she came to the cotton fields, the airport right there in Lancaster, told all the kids to join the Civil Air Patrol. 
Well, my mother did. By the time 1938 came around, she was 17 years old. My mother was a solo pilot of the Piper Cub above the cotton field. Yeah, 1938, we'd be flying a plane. And you're like, oh boy, what were you doing when you were 17? Yeah, I was playing rock and roll, trying to be a girl. My mother was saving the world. So this song is about love and about growing up in the deep south of the 40s and a song about food. <laughs> <laughs> Not this kind of food. <laughs> I don't see a collard green on it. <laughs> 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 oh, my uncle is only up this far. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. I'll be back. Yeah. 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 So this song is a is for the woman who gave me my career. She gave me her, my, my first instrument, or Arthur Godfrey ukulele, which I played immediately because I had music in my DNA or something was going on there. And I went on to play the piano when I was six, the trumpet when I was nine. Became a jazz trumpet player and played around in the Eat Me Coffee Houses of Seattle in 1959. Rock and roll came around, and then there was some question as to how this was going to be taken by Lieutenant Captain Major Colonel Wick. <laughs> My mother loved rock and roll, so there was no problem. And then about 25 years ago, I just got rid of the bands and just started playing and writing by myself. My mother didn't get to see much of that. She died when she was nine years younger than I am. She was 60. And so this song is for her. And it's got a little bit of an old-fashioned rock and roll backbeat because that's the way she would have liked it. Stretching and I'm yawning and shaking off the night before. Somewhere in the dwelling, something mighty good is smelling. There's a racket on the kitchen floor. Papa's chopping wood, fire's burning good, kettle's bubbling on the ice. And there's a ham in the oven. Mama's stirring something, son. Touch it and I'll tempt your high. something sweet tonight. That old porch swing is creaking, mama's tea kettle shrieking on a sunny Thanksgiving day. Wipe the smile off my face cause grandpa was saying grace, but any kid would rather eat than pray. I love my collard greens, I want some black eyed peas, I want sweet potatoes on the side. Yes, an okra gets my vote if it slides down my throat. And of course I want my chicken fried. Oh, Mama Lou, I'm staying here with you. Cook me something sweet tonight. Now the tea is double sweet. It cools me when I eat. I smell biscuits rising slow in the pan. Mama's copper full of berries topped with ice cream and cherries Make some better out of it, man My memories roam to that old family home Where it smelled like heaven all the time And Grandmama never changed From a fire to a range That's music to this heart of mine Oh, oh, I'm a little Staying here with you Yes, she did. 
at us broken hearted kids. We never let a blessed word go by. Well, my mama's gentle spirit didn't fly by and hear it raising love and I said reply. Oh, my blue, I'm staying here with you. Oh, cook me something sweet tonight. Cook me something sweet. room practicing my trumpet. I was 13 years old. My mother was up in the front cooking up something good, I am sure. Unlike most parents in our culture whose child takes up an instrument for the first time, she would leave the door open. She liked to hear me play. Seemed like I had a knack for it. I would play the stuff that she liked too. We liked all the same music. It was a strange, interesting time in the world, you know kids like the same stuff as their parents. It's a little strange, but I, I played some of the old jazz tunes, some of the old pop show tune favorites. 30s and 40s. A little Stan Kenton, a little Duke Ellington, George Shearing. And I put the horn down after playing for a while. And then I would do this thing that I had always done. And that is to make music without the need of of a lyric or an instrument, just like Louie and Ella had taught us to do. You just need yourself, something that everybody here could do if you just had the guts. <laughs> everybody could do this. <laughs> Life is 
sad and life is busted. All you can do is do what you must. Do what you must do, and you do it well. I'll do it for you, honey baby, can't you tell? Now look the rain, but the tears, I got all them buckets coming out of my ears. I got buckets of moonbeams in my hand. You got all the love, honey baby, I can stand. I wish I had written that one. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear the fan, but we're going to leave it on. Yeah. You hear the guitar yeah. wobbling? Yeah. You know, like all the organs we used to use back in, in the 60s, if we could slow it down and speed it up, then it would just change, like, you know, like minor shade of pale, pale you know? <laughs> See that that last song you can get away with. It. Let's try this one. I've got I have a really nice set all planned out. <laughs> and then it's people request. come along and tell me what they really rather hear. <laughs> See if I can remember this one. <laughs> this one also for my family. <laughs> Beautiful song. I don't know I've been told What Jesus said in days of old What I've heard's all right with me Be he man or divinity I've known Christians, I've known Jews I've walked miles in many shoes Muslim, Shinto, meek and old, tethered to the ways of old. Who would twist their words so wide, turn love to hate and truth to lie? I don't know what I've been told, what Buddha said in days of old. Tell me who would make these halls Where liars stand and gamblers fall Tell me who would sow these fields Where warriors ride on armored wheels Tell me who will weep for all Severed heads on hunter's wall I don't know but I've been what Mohammed said in days of old. We sit and talk of many things. Maybe we can laugh and sing while the sun goes down. While the sun goes down. Why create a lovely land for one to own? And one be banned. Why create a mockingbird for one to kill and not be heard? Why create your lovely eyes to never see a moon arrive? Why create a golden moon that only shines on palace rooms? Let's sit and talk of many things Maybe we can laugh and sing While the sun goes down While the sun goes down I don't know 
Jesus said in days of old. But I don't think you'll come again to share the blame for the shape we're in. Let's sit and talk of many things. Maybe we can laugh and sing while the sun goes down. While the sun goes down. While the sun goes down. Sing that one. While the sun goes down. While the sun goes down. Okay, another request. This one hasn't been played in concert for many, many years, and I'm not even sure what key I played it. Because when I first wrote it, oh, by the way, this is a re-recording of that one, the one that you heard. It's been recorded twice, and I'm not sure what key I played. I used to have a falsetto a long time ago. I used to be able to go, mm. <laughs> <laughs> and it just doesn't happen anymore. And so. I may have to, I'm going to take my chances. Whatever, whatever squeaks out, folks, is what you're going to get. I was, a, I was involved in Columbia, South Carolina for many years with a group of people. We used to put on programs and write plays and do things having to do with homelessness. And uh, homeless people in town, there were only about 400 actually that lived in the Columbia area, but, but we got to know some of them. We wrote about them. We found out about their lives and found out that the stereotypes from them that's God, as Ray Charles said, are not accurate at all. Really? Really. <laughs> and uh, so I wrote a bunch of songs for some of those plays. Here's one of them. Let's see if I can. I think I can remember this one. There's no big rock candy mountain Or golden streets for such as we Cards were dealt, I came up empty Hand me down, easy if you please Old soldiers fallen by the roadside all in prey to gravity Heroes willingly forgotten Hand me down Easy if you please Let me lie Where I fall With my back To the wall Close your eyes Walk on Along the outskirts of the city Spirits walk down on their knees Is there a secret to belonging? Hand me down, easy if you please Come here and tell me that you love me Lift my head up off my knees I am no one if not your brother Hand me down Easy if you please Let me lie where I fall With my back to the wall Close your eyes Walk on by Go in peace and hand me down easy if you please. There's
there's a hotel in Miami The rooms are cooled by ocean breeze I had a lover once and she waited for me Hand me down Easy if you please Let me lie Where I fall With my back To the wall Close your eyes Walk on by Go in peace And hand me down album that I'm working on, or was working on, um, is full of songs like this. Songs that were either parts of albums that have been out of print, or songs that were never, I never thought were ready for prime time. I just wrote them, and I liked them, they were my little gems, and, and nobody ever got to hear them except my friends and my family. And sometimes those friends and family would say, well, why don't you record that one? I really like that one. So this one here is um, Reflection of a period, my, my, my professional career has involved classical music, jazz music, rock and roll, folk, R&B, a little country, you know, blues and whatnot. But there's one particular flavor of music that I like to play the most because it was the most fun. Um, it involved some skill, it had to have good harmonies, it had to have good timing, everything had to be just right. It was doo-wop music. <laughs> I love doo-wop music. In 1963, I had a band with 12 people in it. <laughs> we didn't make any money at all. <laughs> July 1st, 2nd, and 3rd, 1963, we were playing Pavilion in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. This was what came, became known as beach music, which is, I believe, the title of Pat Conroy. Because he's a South Carolina boy, and he knows what beach music is, and he knows that, that the song that goes with it is so important to the people of South Carolina that it's the only state that I know of that has a state dance. <laughs> they don't have a whole lot else going for it. But <laughs> I love my home state, don't get me wrong. But the state dance is this male-centered, egotistical kind of thing that people like to do. And people who like, the, it's called the shag, which is like the red-headed stepchild of the jitterbug, okay? <laughs> you know, back in the 60s, everybody had some form of the jitterbug. And this was the, the, the beach music shag. And now people gather from miles around, thousands of them, and they listen to, I love beach music, and they just dance around. And the guys, it's a guy's dance. Uh, it's the only way Southern boys, see, it's hard to explain. <laughs> South, South Carolina boys, see, are told by their parents that when you go out on you know, a Saturday night, it's the only time you'll ever hear a word that sounds, that sounds a little off color. It, it's, it's, Southern people are not given, especially the older generation. But my Aunt Lydian, when I would go out to go, go dancing at the Legion Hut on a Saturday night in East Spring, South Carolina, she would say, now, Jackie, don't you show your ass. <laughs> And what that means is, don't, don't gesticulate wildly. Just do the way you're supposed to do, and that's dance without hardly moving. <laughs> These are Southern Baptist folks here, you know? You know, if you're going to dance, then just don't do much. So, so the way that Southern boys can get away with dancing 
they can't go out there by themselves. They want, they want to show their moves. So, so they concentrate on their feet. But they don't do much. It's just they're doing these little stupid steps. And, and they, when they dance, they're staring down at their feet the whole time. And out here somewhere, there's a woman at the end of the <laughs> And she's just an excuse for him to get out there and show his ass, sort of in a very <laughs> subtle kind of way. This is, this is South Carolina tradition here. And, uh, so I, I, I wrote this song. It's, a, it's actually, I wrote this as a serious song. And, and it, but I put it in a duop form because I really love duop. And uh, I like to hear all the other voices. And when, they, when this is recorded, and, uh, you'll, you'll hear all the other voices. The deep bass voice, Wayne, who came with me. Yeah. He sings, his, his voice is so deep, you know, he can drive cars off the road with his mouth. Just by, by saying, hello. You know. And a high voice, is, and it's just, it's just South Carolina to is what it is. But um, I, don't, I don't tell people in South Carolina where I got the idea from the song, because most of them would, not, would have no clue who Dylan Thomas is. But, um, but somewhere in a Dylan Thomas book, uh, the book, um, short book called uh, Portrait of an Artist as a Young Man, there's a place where a young woman is standing at the edge of the tide. The water's lapping up around her feet, and our young hero is staring gaga at this beautiful young woman. And then the next line in the book is, suddenly the tide. Period. As Dylan Thomas can do, he can, it's just like, it's fraught with all kinds of things. So I made the song that. And so when people listen to it, they say, well, that's pleasant, you know. <laughs> so, so this one is not full of all of the fun stuff and do all the, except for the harmonies and everything, but you'll get the idea. And if you get caught up in the chorus, you can sing along with me if you like. And if not, I'm perfectly willing to do it by myself. <laughs> Also, for you guitar players, I have never in my life written a song that has four chords that are repeated endlessly. <laughs> I've never done that before, so this was kind of an experiment terror for me. <laughs> I know it's coming. It seems like you've got something to say. I hear the thunder, and I guess it's going to rain all day. And weren't we laughing, watching funny people in the street, and making up their life stories and giving them names, and laughing at the shoes, laughing at the shoes upon their feet. Dancing through the crowds along the shore And singing at the top of our lungs Stupid words of love And feeling like the waves Feeling like we never felt before Oh, suddenly the tide Suddenly the tide Suddenly the tide Talking, 
bound to make some fellas start to cry. Those busy, busy bodies hurting all their friends and telling lies, 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 lies. Something is moving, shifting like the sand below my shoe. And what about, what about all the other people, all those friends and relations, breaking them the news, breaking like the waves upon my It sounds like the last note in Joe Cocker's You Are So Beautiful. <laughs> devised by left-brainers for left-brainers. They left me out. <laughs> so my revenge is, was just flunk my way to the top. Flunk? <laughs> flunk. Oh. Flunk. Oh. Flunk. Flunk. Yeah, I know. We did it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> my kind of people over there. <laughs> no offense, Judy. It's a PhD in the <laughs> So here we go, I'm just going to take off on my little right brain trip where I love to go, where I love to visit, I don't know if I'd like to live there. But some people may have a problem with this when you're used to hearing songs in very crisp, simple verse, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, because this is just kind of like, whatever. <laughs> this will be a good song. Whatever. You love me, baby. Whatever. <laughs> you saw me standing on 
Broke out a dream in my heart Without a love Fairy tales can come true, it can happen to you, if you're young at heart. It's hard, you will find, to be narrow of mind, if you're <laughs> young at heart. Think of all you'll derive out of being alive. Hendrix. Here is the best part. You'll have a head start if you are a monetary young at heart. Go pretty baby to the grocery store. We drank all the wine and we need some more. The little man said we're gonna get some snow. So let's lay up in the cabin and watch the wind blow. Find you a girl and will love you all day. She looks like a woman, she will never run away. Never live again with my back to the wall. I just love my music and my woman, that's all. I love my music and my woman, that's all. Well, there's something happening here, but it is ain't exactly clear. There's a man with a gun over there telling me I've got to beware. It's time we stop. Hey, what's that sound? Everybody, look what's going down. Along with me, down the Mississippi. Elvis couldn't sing that in 1959. <laughs> <laughs> to make my dreams come true. Make clothes for me time. Make me through. Let me know where I stand from the start. I want you, I need you, I love you. With all my heart. 1959, I had a band in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, where I lived unhappily ever after. <laughs> we played four straight hours of Elvis Presley. <laughs> I still like some of this. Are you guys Googling me or something? <laughs> 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 I thought, I thought, I thought, sorry, I mistook you for a teenager. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> I 
out in the West Texas town of El Paso. I fell in love, I got shot, and I died. Let's get this thing over with, Martin. Gonna find her. What is that song? Oh, I've been searching. Searching every which way. Been searching, or oh, it sounds like a lot of other songs. <laughs> I'm a long, tall Texan. I ride a big white horse. <laughs> you guys are lousy as backup singers. <laughs> I mean, you had your chance right there. <laughs> Everybody's going out and having fun. I'm just a fool for staying home and getting up. Can't get over the house you set me free. All oh, for me. I try to get people to sing, set me free. Y'all ought to see them in Cambridge, Massachusetts. All those guys from MIT come around and they say, free, free, free. <laughs> Cambridge, you know, people up people there in Massachusetts, they think so much. Those people think all the time. I don't know what's wrong with this world. I'm from time. Massachusetts. That's why you married. <laughs> Once was a way to get back on work. Once was a way to get back home, sweet pretty darling, do not cry. And I will sing a lullaby. I think I'm gonna be sad. I think it's today. Kind of wacky like my old friend Jack. When I want to have fun, I lay down in the cool. I take my guitar, my woman, three cats, stay all week. Find you a girl and I love you all day. Even like a woman, she will never run away. Never live again with my back to the wall. He don't love you like I love you. If Did you guys notice when I started singing that the, the tone of my voice changed? You don't look. The fact is, I went to the University of Georgia from 1961 to 1970. What's <laughs> so damn funny about that? Takes a while to get a PhD. Hardly. But. One of my favorite jobs there, I had to be a little bossa nova band, like on a, on a Wednesday night, we'd go to this fern restaurant here on the top of the hill, and go... Oh. <laughs> and we play rock and roll. we play all of that stuff, you know, we play a lot of R&B and whatnot. But the coolest thing was, that, well, I had a folk group too, I forgot about that. Oh, no. <laughs> We were playing things like this. When you hear the train, I'm on the North Island. This is actually a very pretty song. I could have done Tom Dooley. Yeah. <laughs> but I had a great gig. University of Georgia. People found out that I could put bands together at the drop of a hat. So I got hired to back up some of the touring R&B and blues artists came through the University of Georgia. <clears throat> I got to play with John Lee Hooker, Big Joe Turner, 
platters and the drifters and the shrells and the uh, coasters. <laughs> Bobby Blueblad, Jimmy Reed. Wow. Oh. Bobby Blueblad. Without a warning, both my far. You took it, darling, and it tore it apart. The thing I want to point out is, you notice how my voice changes when you start doing blues music. That's what all white blues players have to do. <laughs> <laughs> they can't help it that they're white. But the thing is, the whiteness in your voice is insipid as a blues singer. It's just insipid. <laughs> there are people who devote their whole lives to singing the blues, and they're white. But they have to change their voice. And I tried that. I tried that. Um, I remember I used to go into a fraternity party, and I knew how to get everybody going. You'd walk in there. If a woman told my mama on the day I was born, you got a boy child coming, gonna be a son of a gun. Who was that? <laughs> that was a 22-year-old white college kid of some privilege. <laughs> so in 1965, when I backed up John Lee Hooker, I had an epiphany, revelation, whatever you call it. One of those things that changes your life. Listen to John Lee Hooker backing him up. I determined that I was never going to do what he did. <laughs> so, I mean, the old man could barely play guitar. I mean, there he sat right in front of me, and I put a bass player, my old friend Bennett Johnson here, and, and Charles Terman on the drums, two black folks, and I was the only white person on the stage. John Lee Hooker sat down there and started singing. And me, I was so full of myself. I was sitting up there. I was full of myself. I was ready to show up. I was ready to show the old man what I could do. And he started playing. And my first thought was, I'm going to play circles around this old dude. Because <laughs> he couldn't play very well. But you know what? He started singing, and I had a lucid moment. <laughs> and I realized that whatever was coming out of that old man came from his history and his emotional background. And nothing I could do as a white person, no matter how much I read, no matter how many 78 RPMs I learned to play the exact licks from, I would never do what that man did. So then I had to start being myself. I had to use my own voice. I realized that my blues career thus was at an end. I was singing some of that stuff with my voice, but it was so insipid I would have never gotten any work. Like this. Gypsy woman told my mother. On the day I was born, you've got a boy child coming, going to be a son of a gun. How white can I be? Mercy, mercy me. <laughs> so thank you, John Lee Hooker, for pointing me in the right direction. I have nothing against the, you know, the uh, John Hammonds of the world and the Chris Smithers of the world who, who play really good blues and they pretty much use their own voice got this great energy. But I have to accept the fact that my heritage was dead white European males. <laughs> Perry Como. <laughs> oh, he may not be dead. <laughs> Mozart. Stravinsky. Gustav Mahler. Brahms. So I have to, I have to accept the fact that these things are combined. 1969. I was in Athens, Alabama, at Athens Junior College with my eight-piece band. We were doing a co-build with another group out of Macon. Six people, six young men, just on their first album. They were touring the country trying to get well known. At the end of the night, somewhere around 3 o'clock in the morning, my band and their band mixed up. We got on the stage together. I found myself as playing a lead guitar with Dwayne Allman. Wow. So he and I were playing lead, and my piano player there, and Greg Allman on the organ, and we switched our drummers around. 1969, I heard him play, man. And I thought, wow, man, that guy can play. The subsequent conversation with him afterwards, I found out that he believed exactly the same as I did. He just loved the blues, and that's one reason he didn't sing. Greg Allman doesn't really Talk like this, <laughs> but when he records, he sounds like an old kind of old black guy. You know? <laughs> Greg Almond is this kind of, I can't tell you what an old friend George was saying. He said, He just kind of a little, little windy. <laughs> <laughs> so it's an interesting thing to realize that 
Dwayne Allman was willing to accept, influence the blues, like me. I'm not a blues player. I found out though that the further north I go, people call me a blues player. <laughs> the further north I go, the more blues player I am. <clears throat> further south I go, the less and less the blues player. But I love the blues. I love it. It shows up in my music. Get to play all that stuff, like a, even the stuff that wasn't blue. Heavenly shades of night are falling. It's twilight time. Out of the mist, your voice is calling. It's twilight time. One purple curtain. <laughs> that was always a strange line. Does anybody know that line? One purple colored curtains. Mark the day together <laughs> at last at twilight time. Here in the afternoon. That was good stuff. When I, oh, I'm sorry. I, I just can't handle it. Oh, HDD, you know. <laughs> Is it HDD or HADD or ADHD? Oh, HIV. HOV. Get out of the HOV lane. Get out of the HADD lane. Music's like a log getting kicking around. Ringing off the walls, what a beautiful sound. A woman's like a tree with her arms in the air. And fingers like the wind running through her hair. Find you a girl that'll love you all day. Treat her like a woman she will never run away. Never live again, but back to the wall. I can't believe I'm 70 years old still doing that. <laughs> Chuck Berry was the opposite. He lived in Winsville, Missouri. He was the whitest black guy I ever heard. <laughs> it's just amazing, folks, how our culture works, you know. Yeah. Man, believe this country. Why can't you be true? Oh, man, believe. Why can't you be true? You just started back doing the things you used to do. I was more beaten over the hill. Doesn't sound like blues, does it? That's Missouri blues. That's Chuck Berry. playing the bongos in 1960, I'd be up on the stage and, and we'd quit playing all the jazz stuff we were playing and I'd get up and read Ferlinghetti and Ginsburg. <laughs> yeah, I was up there 16 years old, kind of an incipient beatnik. <laughs> Standing there with a copy of The Dharma Bums by Kerouac in the hip pocket. And I'd push it up high enough so people could see what I was reading. <laughs> Style or substance, big deal for a kid. <laughs> Ain't no use sitting wonder where I be. <laughs> no matter anyhow. Anybody ever heard Joan Baez sing this? Yeah. It is, it is yes. utterly yes. ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you're going to pursue a career in music, you need to sing what is what suits you, what is good for you. Just because Joan Baez slept with Bob Dylan for a couple of years and they were good friends, doesn't mean she has to go out and sing his song. <laughs> Here's a woman that. She's got this beautiful voice. And she should stick with Donna, 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 Donna. She should do that stuff where you get that little worldly voice, you know? And she's got a beautiful voice. She's got beautiful posture. She's got beautiful diction, you know, and everything. But she should not sing. 
ain't no use to sit and wonder why, babe. <laughs> I mean, Bob Dylan's music got attitude. This does not have attitude. It don't matter really how. I mean, somebody with that kind of sound singing, it don't matter anyhow. <laughs> it's a lie, and you know it when you hear it. <laughs> but Bob Dylan's singing, he's got an attitude. It's an attitude song. Ain't no use to sit and wonder why, babe. <laughs> Yeah, it don't matter any head. <laughs> no, no. No. It no use to sit and wonder why. Proper posture. Grab a welcome on this head. Carry the book on my forehead. <laughs> Sorry, Joe. I was walking down the beach one bright and sunny day Spied a great big wooden box of floating in the bay I pulled it in and opened it up and what to my surprise And I discovered a book right before my eyes What? <laughs> 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 Hillary and Ryan Hood you sure are looking good. <laughs> well, that's a stalker song of I yeah. <laughs> That's some, I tell you, some memories are better left alone. <laughs> Singer-songwriter, whereas he used to call him a folk singer. 
until he ticked everybody off at 1965 Newport Folk Festival and went electric on them. It was the first time I think I ever heard the term singer-songwriter, and it was applied to me, and I don't really care what you call me as long as you book me. <laughs> so playing this, playing this medley a couple years ago, I came to the conclusion there, are, there were no singer-songwriters in the 30s and 40s. I started thinking about that. They're all so recent thing. Back then, you had people who wrote the songs, you had people who recorded them. You never went out and bought an album of Rodgers and Hammerstein singing their own stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you never went to a concert by Louis and Ella, Perry Como down the shore and had them sing. Here's a little song I wrote about my mother last night. About it some more, and I came up with a singer songwriter or two from the 30s and 40s. One of them wrote this beautiful thing. Hoagie Carmichael. Wow, that was beautiful stuff. He even wrote the state song of Georgia. Unfortunately, he couldn't sing it like Ray Charles. Ray Charles defined Georgia. That's not my voice. Poor oh, Georgia. The whole day through. Hoagie probably went, Georgia. Oh, Georgia. The whole day through. <laughs> the white version, you know what I mean? Some people record songs and they do it so well that they define the song. Anybody who follows and tries to do it again. That's why so many of the new sequels and remakes nowadays suck. <laughs> Hoagie Carmichael's best friend, buddy, his pal, sometime roommate, occasional co-writer, is buried in his hometown of Savannah, Georgia, where the Moon River flows just south of Savannah. Savannah City has just put a beautiful little bronze statue of Johnny Mercer lying sitting right down there on one of the majestic oaks on those parks in downtown. He was one of my favorite songwriters. I love you like nobody's loved you. Come rain. Deep as a river, come rain, come rain, oh come shine. You said when you met me that it was just one of those things. But oh, don't you ever bet me, cause I'm gonna be if you let me, you're going to love me like nobody's loved me. Come rain, come rain or come shine. Happy together, unhappy together. Or shine. I love you, rain. Or shine. Thank you all very much.
Thank you, Sue. Thanks for letting us come in here and making the space for me every year. It's okay. It's always fun. You guys have great friends. What, what am I? Lake County. Yeah, Lake County. Lake County, California, Upper Lake. Is everybody from Lake County? No. Oh, we got a guest. Ooh. Yes. 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 The nice part is the Lake County. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. Nice. Right. Yeah. No, if I was to go down to some other part of Lake County, it wouldn't be so much. That's so nice. That's so nice. Well, <laughs> they all have something to offer. There you go. That's right. Okay, I'll play this song. That's a wine, though. Huh? That's a wine. It's a wine song. You're right. I should, I should just play it. I'm playing this song. Keep yeah. down here. That's you can sing, of course, with me if you like. It's, it's real on. simple. I wrote this song a long, long time ago. And I even have to use a pick, which is very strange for me. As you see, my pick guard is, let's see, maybe I can pull it, yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Cause you know you'll see her tonight. You borrow the car from your brother. You burn up the telephone line. At last you're certain you'll show her a very good time. says money means nothing she gives you the keys to her life you know not to question good fortune that falls on your path and that night you look down on the city you can see that you're worth more than one and two is the elegant number when love's just begun Free flows to one. Free flows. 